Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Checking in on the market, so we had a, an eventful day with the S&P 500 hitting all-time highs, SPX breaking 3,000 psychological resistance. Essentially, my breakdown of what happened is Powell started speaking pre-market. The market really liked what he was saying in terms of increasing the odds that a rate cut is coming, and the market responded to that with a huge move up, no consolidation before the open, which surprised me, and then followed through up towards 300 psychological on SPY. From there, we pulled back significantly, at that point, the Fed minutes that came out at two were irrelevant. And I say that because the market had pretty much priced in what Powell had already said. And at that point, it was just an hourly equilibrium. All-time high, low of the pullback, setting a lower high on the minutes being released. And we ended with an hourly equilibrium. So that's a bit unfortunate. I prefer to see these hourly equilibriums break during regular trading. But if it's a bull break, we're looking at all-time highs again. And if it's a bear break, we're looking down at 295.48 support. And we're in a bit of a less than ideal situation for the bulls at this point if it were a bear break on the hourly. The reason being, last time we consolidated on the daily, we had tons of space to work with. We knew a daily higher low was very likely. Now that we've seen continuation, if we break 295.54, I consider that losing the daily higher lows. So this is the kind of scenario of what a, an ascending wedge is. It's essentially when you see higher highs, but don't get a whole lot of follow through. And that's when we get the setup for the potential of a more significant pullback. So it all depends on how the hourly breaks. But the bottom line for me is that if the hourly time frame breaks bearish, we do need to be cautious if we break 295.48 support. That's now the line in the sand for me. And if that level breaks, I'm zooming out to the weekly. And then I'm then going to look for weekly consolidation and a higher low to form because the last higher low was six weeks ago down at 273.09. So bulls still in full control, but these are the scenarios that I'm laying out for the potential if we break the hourly equilibrium bearish tomorrow. IWM still weakest, still within our tightening range. This is now day number six. Resistance was up at 156.74, and we pulled back just under that level, unable to break it by about 18 cents. So staying within this tightening range, and again, IWM clearly weaker than any of the other sectors that we look at. And the reason for that in large part is due to the biotech sector, in my opinion, which we'll look at in just a second. Tech sector continuation to all time highs. And we have the daily higher low at 188.66. That's the line in the sand for me. And we have the same hourly equilibrium. Little bit more favorable for the bulls, but pretty much the same thing. And how SPY breaks is likely going to be how QQQ breaks. And everything that I just said for SPY applies for QQQ. XLF. Unable to break resistance of 2827, pretty much a double top. And if we were to break 2781 from here, that would be the red flag of losing the daily uptrend. I was a bit surprised at the strength of the financial sector to start today because of the odds of the rate cut. Normally, that would be bearish for the sector. And we did close at the low of the day, but the bulls held up for a good part of today, which again, I found surprising. But if we lose that higher low of 2781, we zoom out to the weekly. And we then look for a weekly higher low and see if the bulls can hold 2689 support and keep those little higher lows in their favor. XLV, the healthcare sector, seeing a little bit of a bounce here as well. But the resistance to break for continuation is 9442, a bit weaker than the tech sector. And if we were to fail to break 9442 and then drop down and break 9262, that would be a red flag for a loss of the daily uptrend. Pick the wrong level there. It's 92.62. So that's the tightening range to be watching. And pretty much we can look at each individual sector and get clues on what the S&P 500 is going to do. If QQQ breaks the hourly equilibrium bullish, we're going to look for SPY to do the same. If XLV loses the daily uptrend, that's a red flag for the S&P 500. The biotech sector, tons of volatility. And I cannot stress enough, I know I said it in the last video, if you are looking for a volatile instrument from the high of the day to the low of the day in the biotech sector, and we're going to anticipate this is going to continue pretty much into the election, but we pulled back 2.6%, which means that the three times leveraged ETF 
saw a seven and a half plus percent move. So LABD went up seven and a half percent in an hour and a half. And then LABU went up, oh, about 5% in an hour and a half. I traded the bounce and I played LABU, sold it for some short-term gains, definitely didn't hold this entire bounce. But bottom line is volatility for day traders, LABU, LABD, it is worth getting to know these two instruments. And whether you're trading some other sector and maybe your sector is in a tightening range and does not have a lot of opportunity, we always wanna have other places that we can look. If I'm not trading MJ stocks, I'm trading cryptocurrency. If I'm not trading crypto, I'm trading leveraged ETFs. Always somewhere to trade so I'm not forcing trades in a less than desirable environment of tightening ranges and lack of liquidity. The VIX is pulling back with our new daily lower high being established at 1470. We're looking back down at $12. And again, just the clear little lower highs on these peaks. And the question is, can we hold 12 Pretty much have to hold 12 and break 1470 in order to change this daily trend at this point gold bulls nice bounce dollar weakness so we got the weakness we needed in the dollar and it was reaction to powell pre-market there is still a scenario for an inverse head and shoulders pattern here and a bull break for the dollar to take out both 97.59 and 97.77 resistances if we get that turnaround so that's something to be aware of but gold is in a nice tightening pattern as anticipated. And we have our double top, our low. That's the wrong line. And then our higher low formed. And now we're looking back up at 1439 as the key resistance. If we reject from that level, we're going to look to stay tightening up into next week. I am still holding NUGT. I sold half of my position this morning into strength. And I am not selling the rest as long as we are in a daily uptrend for gold. And NUGT is even a bit stronger than gold as the market bulls are helping push us up to the high of 2019, which is just a couple percent away, whereas gold still has a bit more distance to cover. So I'm still bullish the minor space, and we'll see if gold can break this equilibrium and tightening range bullish. Oil had a very bullish day, again, on the back of dollar weakness, but to go from 56 and break $60 is a very good sign. We've been watching this monthly equilibrium and we still have not set our monthly lower high compared to 66.58. I do still anticipate that that will likely happen and we will still stay in this tightening range. But what this does is it extends the timeline. If that was our lower high and we were pulling back, I would have expected a break in September. But now that we have not set our lower high yet, this pattern, we could set our, our lower high perhaps in July, pull back for a higher low in August. September or October is where I'm gonna be looking for an oil break of this tightening monthly pattern. As far as the daily chart goes, again, the most important resistance level for me, we've got 63.79, but it's all about 66.58 and whether or not we form a lower high compared to that level. Big old turkey is two feet from this window, scared me with some babies. Babies are the size of little chickens. Yeah, I see you. So, Natural gas, higher low at 237. We did break to resistance. We broke to a higher high over 2478, but not a ton of follow through. The four hour uptrend is the most important for me. If we see a bear break of 2426 after the bull break, that's a red flag. If we can hold the four hour uptrend, we're gonna be looking to make our way back up to 250 psychological resistance. So the four hour uptrend is what's most important on natural gas. And the question is, can the bulls keep that uptrend and see a bit more convincing follow through on this daily bull flag? So far, so good. But again, it's the four hour uptrend that's most important. So hourly equilibriums to be watching in the short term. Daily higher lows are key. Lose the daily higher lows and we'll look for weekly higher lows. Volatility in the biotech sector. Bull miners still in control. Gold bulls still in their tightening range. We'll check back in tomorrow. Have a good rest of your night. So today we're gonna to talk about lawns. We've got some magnolias blooming and I haven't put chemicals in this for a while so there's algae growing in it, but gonna throw some snails and things in there. But I wanna talk about lawns, this space right here. Eventually I'm gonna, over the winter, I plan on putting a big tarp down, cutting a circle in it, putting weight on it and killing the grass to plant a bunch of perennial flowers and potentially some blueberries and things here. 
But this is probably the longest that this lawn has gotten in years because the person who used to live here was a career landscaper and just watching the neighbors, everybody mows their lawn once a week, keeps it nice and golf course small. And if you look at the lawn, how many flowers, I don't know if you can see it, but the amount of flowers that are currently blooming because I've let it grow multiple weeks, there's literally thousands of flowers here. So when you have thousands of little flowers, and again, I doubt you can see it, but just looking straight across, there's a bunch of insects that are using the flowers for pollination. So you let your lawn grow, you get a bunch of flowers, whether it's weeds or whatever, and then you get a bunch of insects, and then there's a bunch of birds to eat the insects, and it's just this whole ecosystem that starts to develop that you don't have if you mow your lawn every single week. It's a little bit of a sanctuary. The squirrels and the chipmunks can use it for cover, and it's just a different world than if you would just cut it. And just going around here, this path, all these little weeds, eventually when they get big enough, I'll pull them. But I came out here the other day and I was going to start pulling some weeds. And I looked at this one weed and I thought, look how many bugs are eating these leaves. Why do I care if there's a little green thing there? If it flowers and spreads its seed, then yeah, maybe I'll, I'll get it before it reaches that point. But there are things that are eating it and I could care less if there's a little bit of green in the mulch here. So that's just a different perspective that you don't get taught. And it was interesting because, you know, I grew up with my dad who liked his lawn like many people's dads did. And the other day we got that wood slab pile delivered and the truck drove onto the grass and it's a part of the grass that we're going to be covering anyway. And I had this instinctual reaction, oh, not on the grass. And I had to catch myself and say, but that doesn't matter at all. And it was just really interesting to observe that that was my reaction that has been burned into my being from growing up. So if you can let things grow, provide sanctuary for plants and animals, and there's no reason that we need a flat picture perfect lawn. See you next time.